welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've, I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game the game of life. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. I just want to be the best in basketball. So I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me. So I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels, we did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's, it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size, being 6'3", 6 6'4", 6 to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strength. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here.
always been here. Um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting. And I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just is really, it's really cool. In four years, this, this could be you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here! Our football team haven't won a sectional title in 32 years. There's no team better than us, and we just do our job. You know, nobody really want to lose no more. All you want is greatness. You want me one, two, three. This is a game that's been on my calendar all year. We don't need fan discipline. We a whole different north side team. Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome in Indiana High School football fans. SummerCitySports.com coming to you live from Etzler Field, Woodburn, Indiana, home of the Woodland Warriors, as we start our sectional coverage in the state of Indiana as they host the Concordia Cadets. This is SummerCitySports.com. Thank you for joining us. Thomas Nolan on the camera. Tim Atkinson here calling your play-by-play. -play. Excited to get this sectional rolling. Sectional number 27 here in the state of Indiana in Class 3A. We are all across the Northeast Indiana area. I think we're live at five different venues here this evening to bring you outstanding sectional coverage. Well, of course, you can follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. Like and follow our Facebook page, Summit City Sports. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell. You'll be notified of all of our live events as they do happen. Taking a look at sectional number 27 here in the state of Indiana. The Concordia Cadets of the Summit Athletic Conference taking on the Woodland Warriors out of the Allen County Conference uh, tonight here in about, oh, about 20 minutes away from game time. Looking at the top of that sectional number 27, uh, the Norwell Knights are taking on Heritage there in Class 3A. The winner of that game will play the winner of this game next weekend, uh, which will most likely be at, uh, it, well, it would be at Concordia if Concordia wins. Uh, if Norwell, either way, if Concordia wins, they are hosting a sectional semifinal round. And then looking at the bottom of that bracket, bracket, the bottom four teams is Yorktown and Delta, and then Belmont and the Railroaders of Garrett in sectional number 27. Uh, a lot of prognosticators, of course, looking at the Norwell Knights as the cream of the crop. They did get defeated uh, last weekend in the conference championship against their rival, Columbia City. Uh, so it's going to be an outstanding sectional here in sectional number 27 tonight here at Etzler Field at Woodland High School. Taking a look at both these squads. Of course, the host squad, the Woodland Warriors, four and five on the season two and four in the ACC. They are a run-heavy squad, and they have an outstanding pair of runners uh, with also Snyder, the quarterback, a absolutely physical presence and can get the ball down the field as we look at the numbers across Max Preps for the Woodland Warriors, of course, led by head coach Michael Smith. Looking at their quarterback in Jacob Snyder, he does have a about 53% completion percentage, uh, 1,283 completion yards. That's uh, 92 completions on 174 attempts, 11 touchdowns, and only the five interceptions, which is absolutely ideal to keep the ball rolling for the Woodland offense in the run game. 
outstanding sophomore running back, one of the best in Northeast Indiana in that loaded, loaded sophomore class, is, of course, number six in Drew Fleek, the outstanding sophomore, 88, excuse me, 134 carries, 948 yards. He'll clip that 1,000 mark with, that's a 105 average per game. Does have the eight touchdown scores as well. Then, of course, their second leading rusher is Jacob Snyder. Of course, 88 carries for Snyder, 487 rushing yards, and also eight touchdowns. Those two players right there have the only rushing touchdowns for the Woodland Warriors as you see them come off the field here to get prepped for this ball game about 19 minutes in. Looking at their receiving core. Only one player with over 300 yards, so the ball has been spread out quite a bit. 20 catches for number 23 in DJ Garrig, the uh, senior for Woodland. 20 catches, 322 yards, and one score. Watch for number five as well, Nolan Metz, the senior. 14 catches, 204 yards, and three touchdowns. Then you have number 10, the outstanding defensive player that will get to his stats in a minute. Then Chase Bennett there with 162 yards on six receptions. And also watch for number 14, the junior, Braden Smith. Does have 89 yards on four catches, but does have two receiving touchdowns. Looking at the Woodland defense, they, of course, are led by Dylan Bennett but just too shy of the leading tackler and Ethan Vardaman. He does have 60 tackles and eight tackles for loss to go along with Chase Bennett with 58 tackles uh, on the season. Also has two interceptions to his credit. Third on the squad in tackles is number 27. Blake Reed, he is a junior linebacker, and he has 44 tackles on the season, 37 of those solo. And next on there is number 53 in Jack Kohler. As he does have 39 tackles and three tackles for loss, but Vardaman as well of those 60 tackles. I mentioned eight tackles for loss, really gets into the backfield. Uh, no question about it for head coach Mike Smith and the Woodland Warriors. Of course, my first time seeing Woodland live. I think we covered them three three times uh, this season with different broadcasters, but I'm excited to be out here at Etzler Field as they will play host to the SAC. Concordia Cadets who come in three and six overall, of course, three and six in conference play as that will switch up next year. Uh, but they're laid, led by an outstanding wide receiving core. Forehead coach Tim Manigal, one of the best groups he has had, no question. Uh, the state title winner, Tim Manigal, I should say. Well, let's start at that quarterback position at Eli Maddox. If he can keep clean in the pocket and stay away from some of those high passes, he's an elite thrower uh, in the city of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Looking at his numbers, 268 attempts. That's 117 completions on those. 1,521 yards, but then it is 14 touchdowns, but the 13 picks has really hurt him, and he I have seen him play clean football, and when they do, Concordia is a tough, tough beat. Uh, looking at the running backs, of course, the senior Tim Okiewo was the leading rusher. Lennox Kaczynski has taken over thus far with 333, 330 yards on 67 carries and three touchdowns, but that wide receiving core, boy, they are tremendous, and they are led by the outstanding junior in a Johnny Washington. I think he's second or third in the Summit Athletic Conference in receiving yards with 636 yards on 35 completions and eight touchdowns. He's ultra-athletic. He's a top-level basketball player for head coach Phil Brockman, uh, so he can go absolutely and get the ball and has tremendous speed as well. Then you look at their dynamic duo of sophomores. I'm talking about number 23, Noah Trent, and number 83, Kalen William Thomas. Kalen William Thomas, 269 yards on 16 receptions, two scores. Noah Trent, 270 yards on 25 completions, 
with two touchdown rece receptions as well. Concordia can really spread and stretch the field with that outstanding wide receiver core. And then you mix in uh, Maddox right at the tight end slot who can really get out in space and do some damage against the opposing defenses. But their specialty, I'm telling you what, is their trio, their three-headed monster, whatever you want to call them, on the defensive side of things. And James Rusher, Grant Hayworth, and Tyler Moore, these tremendous players. Let's give you the stats. The leading tackler is James Rusher. He's also the center on offense, but 67 tackles on the season. 13 and a half tackles for loss. He lives in the backfield along with their second leading tackler, Tyler Moore, with 56. He has seven tackles uh, for loss in the season. And then, of course, the big fella at number 53, Grant Hayworth, 51 tackles, 11 of those uh, tackles for loss, uh, going along with seven sacks. He's a tremendous defensive trio, and they are tough, tough to keep out of the backfield. So this is a perfect opportunity, what all the community always talks about, and the Summit Athletic Conference is the preparation playing against the four, five, and six A teams in the Summit Athletic Conference prepares the lower classes, i.e. Concordia and Lures, to prepare to play against teams in their own sectional and class and really, really can be a huge advantage when you're playing against the likes of the Snyder, Dwanger, Homestead, Carrolls, and such. Uh, it, it's a tremendous opportunity for Concordia to right the ship here moving in to the playoffs as for Woodland, they want to hold serve right here and get the win to keep their uh, outstanding players and their seniors alive for one more round. I mentioned we are all around the area class 4A down to 1A starts tonight. Of course, a big one there at Wayne as Wayne hosts Columbia City. It's a tremendous kind of opposite of squads. It'll be real interesting to see how that goes. Jeff Mahoney and Joe Walburn on the call out there. Uh, but we're all around the area here tonight, and it wouldn't be uh, at all possible without our tremendous sponsors. And, of course, starting with Parkview Sports Medicine, where you know it is game on. We are the region's largest integrated sports medicine team, providing athletes specialized services from performing their performance to recovery from injuries. To learn more, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com. Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions. Enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment. The Big Eyed Fish. Kelly Automotive celebrating their 70th year in business. Shop all 14 of their brands at jerrydkelly.com. Tom Seal Tires has been servicing the Fort Wayne area for over 40 years. They'll help you find the perfect tire for your vehicle and other auto repair services. Like brakes, like auto repair services, like brakes, wheel alignments, engine diagnostics, and more. At Hot Water Contracting, we invest in our customers by providing peace of mind or their tire process from bid to bill. Visit hotwatercontracting.com. Some of the volleyball trains that builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area. From ages 5 to 18, our players are equipped with elite level skills and a foundation of life skills. Jump on board. Together we can reach the summit. Anderson Heating and Air Conditioning, dedicated to providing new best possible solution for your home or business a system and solution that fits your unique needs visit here's coolheat.com are you ready to do what it takes to put your past behind you what's expunging your criminal record or getting your driver's license reinstated jolly law firms your answer sioka cleaning and restoration providing top-notch commercial cleaning services including janitorial water damage and state-of-the-art disinfectant services throughout northeast indiana online degree programs at the university of st francis are built for convenience and flexibility most degrees can be completed in 12 months visit online.sf.edu so it is about game time here at etzler field woodburn indiana home of the woodland warriors such a beautiful stadium, uh, one of the best in Northeast Indiana. In this broadcaster's opinion, beautiful color scheme that they have with the powder blue and the darker blue as well. Gymnasium, their court inside in the gymnasium is tremendous. And, of course, led by a tremendous athletic director in Robert Berkeley. Robert Berkeley, and always an outstanding host, whether we're out here at Etzler Field or in the tremendous 
basketball situation where they've just had some outstanding players over the past couple of years. So we're about set here between the four and five Woodland Warriors playing host to the three and six Concordia Cadets. We're going to take a short break and come right back. Summit City Sports. has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. Ladies and gentlemen, to Etzler Field, Woodburn, Indiana, Woodland High School, as they play host to the Concordia Cadets, Class 3A, sectional number 27, SummitCitySports.com. Tim Atkinson here calling your play-by-play. -play. We are live from five different venues around the area. We are at Southside at Leo in Class 4A. Also Class 4A is Columbia City at Wayne. New Haven at DeKalb, and then the other 3A matchup, uh, who this this winner will play, and yeah, that is Norwell at Heritage. So looking at these two clubs, I mentioned Woodland 4 and 5, and, and the Concordia Cadets 3 and 6. They're right there. They finished fourth to last in the Summit Athletic Conference, a breakdown of the SAC. Carroll, of course, went unblemished. 9-0 and o on the season, followed by Snyder at 8-1. and one. You'll see a pattern on these records, folks. Northside 7-2, and two. Dwanger 6-3, and three. Homestead 5-4, and four. Lures 4-5, four and five. Concordia 3-6, and six. Wayne 2-7, and seven. Northrop 1-8, and eight. and Southside at 0-9 for the Woodland Warriors. But before we go to that, looking at the Concordia uh, season schedule, they started the win with or started the season with a win against Southside, then a loss, uh, three in a row. Homestead Snyder lures a win against Northrop in overtime, which I saw their outstanding kicker, place kicker Chris Hawk hit a field goal. I think it was 32 yards to send it into overtime, and then Maddox found Washington to win that ball game. Then a loss to Dwenger, a win against Wayne, and a big one. And then a loss to Carroll and Northside to finish it. We were at that, uh, Thomas and I were at that game at Northside uh, last Friday evening. Uh, but Concordia, they have absolute weapons to make a run in Class 3A. For the Woodland Warriors, as I mentioned, 4 and 5 out of the Allen County Conference. They started the season with a loss at Eastside. Then a win against Central Noble. Back-to-back -back losses. Heritage, which could be a potential foe if they beat Norwell in sectionals. Then a loss at Bluffton. Then three straight wins. Southern Wells, Jay County, and Culver Academy. Then a pair of losses to finish the regular season at South Adams. And then here at home in a loss against a very, very talented squad in Adams Central. That leads them right into this matchup against Concordia. In cl Class 3A sectional play, of, close, of course, 5A gets started next week. But let me give you the Allen County Conference rankings and uh, records, excuse me. Uh, Adam Central, of course, 
with the 6-0 and unblemished record in conference play. Heritage at 5-1, and one, South Adams 4-2, and two, Bluffton 3-3, three and three, Woodland 2-4 and four in conference, Jay County 1-5, and five, and Southern Wells 0-6. Oh Another straight pattern there for you here. Here from the ACC and the SAC. As I mentioned, four A, excuse me, five A and six A will get started next week. Northside will host Anderson. Bishop Dwenger will host Snyder in a rematch as we had last year. Then in Class Six A, Carroll does have to go up the South Bend area to take on Penn, and Homestead has to travel down to North Indy to take on Hamilton Southeastern, which is you know just the number one ranked team in the state of Indiana. In Class 6A, you know, not a bad draw. Sheesh. So we're about set here, ladies and gentlemen. Four minutes on the pregame clock as Woodland is getting ready to take the field here with the American flag. And they roll out. Uh, they are greeted by their faithful here at Woodland High School, Etzler Field. I mentioned if you have not been to this venue, it's just an outstanding Indiana High School venue. As let's get the game in screen down so you can take a peek at the outstanding color scheme for the Woodland Warriors. They'll be rocking the gray jerseys and blue helmets with the blue pants. Concordia will be in the all whites here tonight under head coach Tim Manigal. So I mentioned we are about ready here at Etzler Field. And this is SummitCitySports.com. Thanks for joining us here tonight. We're going to step away one more time before the start of this ball game, right here live at SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've, I've gotten a lot faster since then, too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier, too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. SummitCitySports.com. It is game time here at Woodland High School. Sectional number 27 in Class 3A in the state of Indiana. Captains are hitting the field here at Etzler Field. As I mentioned, Concordia in the all-whites with the maroon helmets. Wayne is Woodland in the blue pants, gray jerseys, and the blue helmets. My keys for both offenses. For, for Concordia, the away squad, if Eli Maddox can keep, stay clean in this pass game, that's the advantage here for Concordia. And if he can stay clean, especially in the first half, that will be huge momentum-wise and I think scoreboard-wise for Concordia. 
for the Woodland offense. I believe they do have to uh, stay or keep that three-headed monster of Moore, Hayworth, and Rusher out of the backfield with the read option game of Woodland and head coach uh, Mike Smith. It is going to be very important tonight to keep those three out of the backfield so they so they can really read and see where the defense is going to judge that read option here for Woodland. So it looks like Woodland will receive the kickoff as Concordia won the toss and did defer to the second half. But you can feel the excitement out here tonight at Woodburn, Indiana. Right here, this is it. This is what is happening in Woodburn, Indiana. Just a short, short drive outside of Fort Wayne, Indiana and New Haven, Indiana, just on the east side. So Woodland will receive this opening kick. What a beautiful weather evening for the first game of sectionals in the state of Indiana. 70 degrees out today and a beautiful late October Friday evening. And what better else to do than sit here at Etzler Field and watch these outstanding high schools, Concordia and Woodland. To kick. They're outstanding junior place kickers. Get some looks as well, ladies and gentlemen, at the D1 level uh, for kicking the ball. He's a tremendous, tremendous kicker. And Chris Hawk. Back deep. Jace Kuntz. And number five is Nolan Metz for Woodland. So the preparation, the excitement, the lead up, it's all over. It is game time now. Sectional number 27, whose season will move on, whose season will end. We're about to find out right here at Summit City Sports. Look at Hawk absolutely blast that back for an automatic touchback. And why not start the ball game? with a little bit of Chris Hawk action, but Woodland will take over. First and 10 from their own 20 yard line and they'll get their first look at this tremendous defense. Underrated yardage wise because they're playing against four, five and six A squads every week. And you will see it, they are outstanding. Watch for number, I think they switched up their unis, their numbers a little bit as we'll have to go with the fly on that one. As yeah, Tyler Moore is wearing number 50 tonight instead of number seven. So here we go. First and 10 for Woodland. Man in motion. Snyder in the shotgun. Puts another one in motion. And Vardaman right up that left tackle. And not a lot there for Fleek. Maybe a yard, minimal yard. Looks like they're going to mark him at a two yard gain. It'll be second and eight for Woodland. Outstanding read option club. They'll run it throughout the whole ball game. And it depends a lot on the vision and IQ, IQ of number 12. They're the signal caller in Jacob Snyder. So they're going to go empty backfield with Snyder. Look for a quarterback draw on this. He's going to waggle near side. That's a run, designed run, good blocking, near block in the back. A good no call in my opinion. And a beautiful run on second and eight by their signal caller, Jacob Snyder. First and 10, moving the chains. This is Indiana High School football. We do play four 12-minute quarters. Woodland, three wide. Brought him into motion. The hand, once again, off that left tackle. Uh, number 11, and Ty Loudon, a sophomore, taking the snaps there. Rusher with the tackle, but a good first down play. Second and six. Watch the blitz off the edge, the quick bubble. Wants to pail it outside, and Kaczynski all over that. How about a tackle? And a loss for this Concordia D. Couldn't get my replay up on that first play. 
Sorry, Woodland fans. But our traction, first traction AP replay will be this outstanding defensive coverage. Watch Kaczynski as you got to really go north and south here once you get the ball. Taking it out horizontally is not going to get it done against the tremendous speed of Concordia. Three wide receiver set, same formation. Loudon is going to waggle near side. The throw, and that one is wiggled out. Incomplete pass. We'll bring up fourth and nine. So after the big run from Snyder, nothing happening after that. And it'll be a punt for Woodland. Back deep is Landon Kaczynski for Concordia. And the kick for Woodland is Luke Meyer. Plenty of room up in this press box, boy. They got that one across the field as well. Which was the original. Here's the boot. Nice high kick. Kaczynski's going to let it bounce. Nice kick from Meyer. That's going to take a beautiful Woodland bounce inside the 20. Still a rolling. And then we'll be down at about the 16, 17 yard line. Where Concordia will take over first and 10. What a punt that was. Sheesh. So here we go. 9.32 left in this first quarter. First look at the Concordia offense. Let's see if they choose to come out just throwing the rock. Let's see. Uh, Coach Tim Manigal back at the helm. Taking a year off. And coming back for his kids. Here we go, Maddox. They got four wide receivers. They are split and stacked. And they're going to hand it up. Kaczynski looking for some space. Ooh. Good hit. Good hit. And then a warrior tackle. It will be a gain of about four on first down. As you see, number. Somebody's hurt there. Holding the shoulder. Woodland player, that's number nine, Jacob Romer, who's already, he's got, it looks like a cast on his right hand or wrist. Here's Maddox going to hit, look at that hole. Just running behind Bubba Craig. The big fella, the left tackle, number 77. And, of course, the left guard there, number 61, Chance Harris. Eight and a half left in this first quarter, third and one for the cadets. Four wide receiver set, they're spread. Maddox in the pistol, hand Kaczynski once again, so three straight runs. I think he got it really close though, folks, really close. Let's see where they spot the ball. I think they're going to go for it either way if they don't get it. They're going to mark them short. And the White Hat's going to blow it dead. They want to bring in the chains, I believe. Yep, he's going to bring the chains in too close to call. As sectional and season on the line here. So every possession, ultra important. And I like the call from the referee. Let's just pull him out here and take a peek at the chains. See what we mark it at. It's got to be real close. I mean, Coach Manigal is going to go for it anyway. I think they're just shy. Nope, first down, just the tip of the ball, it looked like. Woo, get a good, good shot up there from Thomas Nolan. So here we go. Maddox will take the call from the sideline. Hustle back. Trips far side, lone wide receiver to the near side is, Kale, is Williams Thomas. Kaczynski in the backfield behind Maddox. In the pistol, Maddox looking to throw. The quick out to right, tackled immediately. How about that smack? It's tremendous. Chase Bennett. And Vardaman, let's take a peek at it on our traction AP replay. A quick out here to the tight end, the big fella. About a three-yard pickup. We'll tackle immediately, though. 
By number 15, that was Carter Fleek. Good tackle by Fleek. And Kaczynski right up the gut. And some outstanding blocking right now for Concordia, feeling it a little bit. Going quick here is Concordia. Seven minutes left in this first quarter. Spread formation again. Maddox. Oh, that one's batted at the line of scrimmage. An incomplete pass. Second and ten for Concordia. Here are the cheerleaders down here on the track at Woodland. Clock stopped at 6.52. Student section, a little bit quiet here to start the game down below us. Looks like it's costume night here at Etzler Field. Handoff Kaczynski on a delayed. They really are see. Uh oh, Kaczynski, he could take this to the house, folks. Over the 40, to the 30, to the 20. Landon Kaczynski, folks. Oh, 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 61 yards out for the score for Concordia. Just like that. What a tremendous running back. Good vision. Great blocking on this as well. Traction athletic performance replay. The delayed handoff. A little wiggle there in the backfield. Got caught in traffic. And that came out of it clean. And then just the speed. No one could pick in to Kaczynski. And he takes it to the house. Hawk. His PAT is up. And it is good. 7-0. The early score for Concordia with 640 left in this first quarter. SummitCitySports.com. This has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. Dealing with joint pains, sprains, strains, or back pain? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walking Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, Ortho Express has specialized orthopedic physicians on staff when you need it most. Get x rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk in clinic. Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 260 266 4007 for more. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as Chris Hawk looking for back-to-back -to -back kick touchbacks. Caught. Oh, kept in. Let's see what he could do here. Bounces it near side. Can he get to the edge? And will pop out of bounds near the 20-yard line was Nolan Metz. Woodland will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Back-to-back -back possessions. Well, let's go to that traction AP replay once again for the score in the long run from Landon Kaczynski. That little bounce right when he got the handoff and then threw that traffic right there. And blasts it out for six. Second possession for Woodland. Down seven zip. Snyder bit back in at quarterback. Got that cast on that right wrist as well. He'll waggle out left, looking to run that immediately. It was run blocks. He's got the edge here on this side. Snyder lowers his shoulders, tackled by Washington, but another big gainer for the run. And quarterback and Snyder. Their two positive plays have been from number 12, just keeping it. Two in the backfield with Loudon. They're going to hand Snyder this way. 
Yeah, you got to keep giving this kid the rock. Uh-oh, to the 40. He's got angled out of bounds, but another beautiful run by Jacob Snyder. Tackle by Avery Cook to Southmore. Boy, they have found, found what is working here, and it's Jacob Snyder. He's shaking up now, though. Hopefully he's all right. He stays on the sideline for this play. We'll keep an eye on it for you folks. Off the right side they're seeing where that's an advantage here they're getting a good push over the right side of their line that run by drew fleek oh, cut the chains in half seven zero down but woodland looking tremendous on the ground right now slow deliberate pace for woodland it was the opposite with concordia in their first possession and it was go 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 woodland very methodical as the big fellow, the sophomore, hard to believe he's a sophomore. He looks huge out there, does fleek. And they're going to hand it to him on the left side. Oh, great blocking. Got through an arm tackle, got through a second arm tackle inside the five. And look at the power, folks. Oh, are you serious? Drew Fleek is just a sophomore, kids. Woo! What a run. Physical, physical back. And a nice, nice offshoot from Snyder. Traction AP replay. Just hand off inside, arm tackle, nope. Arm tackle again, nope. And then three Concordia defenders trying to bring him down, but it is too late. He's rolling in the end zone for six. Whew. What a fun, fun offensive line play we're going to see. We've seen it already from both clubs. Uh, Woodland will line up to go for two here. Three in the backfield with Loudon. Loudon's looking to throw it. Just not sure about that. Unless you don't have a kicker that can kick a PAT. Then, you know, you got to do what you got to do. But they will stay 7-6. And it kind of kills the momentum a little bit as well. As I think Concordia is going to put up some points here tonight. So you got to just keep sticking with them. But. But an outstanding run nonetheless. Let's go look at it one more time on the run of the sophomore Drew Fleek. Whew. Thought he was gone down there. Thought he was down there as well. And then again right there at the five. Spun out of it a little bit. And <laughs> rolls into the end zone. That is a strong, strong kid as a 10th grader here at Woodland High School. And a tremendous name, by the way. Drew Fleek. Top 10 namer. And the ACC for sure. Well, it looks like their place kicker, number 20, is Ava McAlexander, the junior. Saw this last year with Wayne. Had to go to the soccer player and Michelle Hurst as their place kicker. Let's see what kind of leg here. Alexander has but 7-6 good answer from Woodland they don't get the two-point conversion but they really showed their moxie right there taking it down 80 yards down the field line this up almost like a onside it is an onside and what a heads up play dove on it early did Zachary Spielman the sophomore and Concordia now will take over on the 49 yard line of Woodland. Seven six, Concordia. They're gonna keep their foot on the gas. I know head coach Tim Manigal will. Maddox looking to throw it. Going deep, man-to-man -man coverage with the sophomore, William Thomas. Oh, 
nearly nearly brought it down went to high point it and he was just hit as he uh, went to grab that ball that, i believe that was number 13 jace Koontz. it was on the pass breakup outstanding job by the sophomore db that time but maddox aired it out you see he looks really good when he's feeling it in the pocket if you keep him clean There you go, spread formation again. Kaczynski in the backfield behind of Maddox. Maddox throwing again. The quick out. This one time to Trent. An absolute textbook stick on that outside by number five, Nolan Metz. There's some hitting out going on here in this sectional number seven, class 3A. 435 left in this first quarter. Ball is on the 43-yard line of Woodland. Big third down play. Spread formation once again for Concordia. Jeez. Obviously not what you needed there. So that'll be a five-yard penalty and an autumn. Uh, it's not going to be an automatic first down, but it'll make it a first down. How about the hard count from Maddox getting Woodland to jump? First and 10. Pressured. Trent went upfield on the scramble play. And Maddox threw it at the feet. No harm done. I'd, you know, you'd rather see him do that for sure than to force it. Good pressure by the D that time from Woodland. Just under four minutes, 3.59 to be exact. Second down. Kaczynski spun down, but a nice gainer, about a nine-yard gain for Kaczynski on second down. is going to bring up third and manageable. Gonna go under center and they're gonna sneak it. Okay, I ain't seen that all year from Concordia. In the what three games I saw him, Maddox will hurry up. Usually he just stays in that pistol. Got underneath center, quick snap, and an easy first down. Not too shabby there. First and ten, three fourteen, clock rolling. Balls at the twenty-seven yard line of Woodland. Maddox, uh-oh, reverse, a little end. Washington try to cut it back. Great coverage, great coverage. By the Warrior defense, and Washington had nowhere to go. I think he may have got back to the line of scrimmage. They are going to get him for progression to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be a no-gainer. Good defensive play for Woodland on the edge. Two and a half minutes left in this quarter. And Trips far side, right. Quick out here to William Thomas and just threw it too wide. Third and ten now for Concordia. Another big third down play for the Woodland Warrior D. So be huge, huge confidence wise to get a stop. And Kaczynski 
They knew it's four down territory, but how about the defensive play? Jacob Romer, the senior, broke through the line and a tackle and a loss. Loss of one on the play. Fourth and 11 for Concordia. Clock rolling, 145 left. Spread formation, fourth and 11. Maddox looking to throw it. On the out to Washington and overthrew it. Too high. A lot of grabbing going on over there for Woodland. You can see a jersey pull away, but that, I think if the, the pass was a little bit more on money, I think he may have got the call. Well, that was a good 10 yards thrown over the top and a beautiful stand by the Woodland Warrior defense. They'll take over first and 10 from their own. Well, they got it at the 28-yard 28, 28 line. 127 left in the quarter. Put a man in motion, Vardaman. He's going to hand to Fleek. Fleek, yeah, you got, we got to run up the middle a little bit. Uh, that's going to be a tackle and a loss. Too stretched out was Fleek that time. Second and 12, 112 left. So my upset pick of the night was Columbia City at Wayne. Taking the Wayne Generals. It looks like Lamarion Nelson got them onto the board towards the end of the first quarter. Wayne up now, seven zip. Woodland breaks, or excuse me, Woodland breaks it. Trips near side, two of them stacked, or bunched, I should say. Here comes a blitz, and Fleek right at the opposite side of it will get back to the original line of scrimmage and get them two yards back. But it'll bring up third and 10 for head coach Mike Smith. 25 seconds on the clock and 29 on the game. There's about a six second differential. Woodland does not have to run a play if they do not choose to here to end the first. Kind of looks like what's going to happen here. So the end of the first quarter. Your score, Concordia up 7-6 over Woodland sectional number 27. We'll be right back. Summit City Sports. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Second quarter action is upon us. 12 minutes up on the clock. 7-6 is the score. Woodland down by one as Concordia got on the board first with Landon Kaczynski on a 60-yard run. And then Jacob Satter and company came back for the score, went for two, and did not get it. That's where we sit, 7-6. Third and ten, big third down play, and skips that one low. This has got to be a punt here, which Luke Meyer did a tremendous job of flipping the field last time. For Woodland. And he will go back to punt again. Luke Meyer, the junior.
deep. Kashinsky. Oh, let it roll again and once again. It's going to pay for it. Look at that roll. How about flipping the field once again for L Woodland? Is Luke Meyer. What an absolute weapon that is. My goodness. Watch this. Watch this roll. He's kicking this. Let's go to our Traction AP replay. Look where he's kicking this from. His own 19, 20, 21 yard line. And put it inside the 10. Look at the roll. Or inside the 15, I should say. Where it will be first and 10 for Concordia on their third drive. 11.42 left in the second quarter. Maddox in the shotgun. Make it pistol. Flip-flop D. Kaczynski, great edge hold on that far side. That was Vardaman. And another good play defensively for Woodland on the edge. Let's see if we can get you an update from Heritage Woodland, or excuse me, Heritage and uh, Norwell, who the winner of this game will take on. Empty formation for Concordia. Trips near side. Maddox. A quick one to right. Right. He's a turn up field. And yeah, just slow going that time. For a progressional mark on about the 16 yard line. So it will be third and a what, seven? Yeah, third and seven. Seven six. Same formation. Check it. They'll put Kaczynski in the backfield. Lone wide receiver to the far side. Third and seven. Hand to Kaczynski. He's got good blocking on that left side. Lowers his shoulder and gets a first down. Big chain movement there for the cadets. Ten ten left in this second quarter. Tackle by Bennett, their leading tackler. Or check it, their second leading tackler. Fifty eight coming into tonight. Down the center of the field looking for Trent and can't link up. Nine forty five clock stop. Screen, Kaczynski has blockers, has a little hole, got through and absolutely is pounded. But that's going to be a big gain from Concordia. They'll move the chains once again. Kaczynski took a lick, though. So first and ten for Concordia. And I think we're going to have illegal uh, movement here. Illegal procedure on Concordia. And it will be a five-yard penalty against the cadets. That will back them up first and 15. Nine minutes left in the second quarter, first and 15. Kaczynski weaving his way through. That's a big gain to get a lot of yards back. He'll bring up second, I believe, five.
Trent Colbert in the tackle for the Warriors on the week in Baltimore. Eight and a half. The Warriors in the seventh inning, Justin Fleet. Good drive thus far. It started on their own, what, 12, 13 yard line for Concordia. <clears throat> Four wide receivers set. Maddox, the quick one. Trying to turn it upfield and then is pushed back, but it'll be a gain of about four, maybe three, as that was to Henry Scruggs. Drew Fleek with the tackle. Big third down play, third and two. And Kaczynski, that's easy money right there. Look at that blocking on the left side. <laughs> what a hole there was behind Bubba Craig and Chance Harris. Seven six, we've been at. Seven and a half, clock rolling. Four wide receivers set. That's right on the inside. Looking deep for Washington. Yep. Wow, grab the arm. Yeah, I don't know how this side judge didn't see that. He's looking right at it, but the back judge did. And that'll be an easy call as he was beat out wide, had a tug on Washington, or it could have been a big gainer or maybe even a score. So 15 yard penalty, and when you think about it, it's a good penalty. It's not the NFL, so it's not a spot foul. But a 15 yard penalty nonetheless. The penalty gives the cadet the first down, ball off the woman's 30 yard line. Looking to throw. Has a man out wide. Now starting to get a little bit more precise. It's Maddox. That was a good look. Out wide to the sophomore, Williams Thomas. Check this. Heritage and Norwell. Norwell leading 7-0 over Heritage in the first quarter. Maddox, play action. Safety help on Washington. Had to go across the middle. Oh, picked. That's his third interception of the season, Chase Bennett. And he takes it out to the 40. What a play by Chase Bennett. Absolute leader, folks. Woo. Tremendous stuff from Bennett. Traction AP replay. He was looking Washington out wide on this near side. Wasn't there. They had safety help and then threw it behind his intended receiver, Maddox Wright. And Bennett absolutely just picked it. Woodland takes over. Six fifty-eight left in this second quarter. Warriors take it back. Low snap throughout the momentum of the play and just waiting there. Was number 45, Zachary Spielman. The sophomores had a couple of nice plays. And it'll be a big loss on first down. Six thirty-five. Ooh, through the hands of Okawo. And that zone defense was right there behind the wide receiver, nearly pulled that interception down. 
Uh, Woodland will be third and long. Call it 14 for the Warriors. Heritage 7 0 down to Norwell. That's in the second. Heritage hanging strong. Up the middle. And Snyder, minimal gain, about three. They're going to mark it at a four yard gain. We'll bring up fourth and nine. And here it comes the Luke Meyer, I'm sure. He's had two beautiful bunt, uh, punts, one with inside the 21, inside the 15. As Meyer will kick it again, Kaczynski. If he has yeah, any chance to come up and field the ball, you got to do it because I'm telling you what, Meyer has a skill of bouncing that forward. On this turf here at Etzler. Yeah, they're backing Kaczynski up way back. Ooh, nearly got to it. Line drive end over end. Kaczynski catches it in the air. Out wide. And a block. Right on the borderline. The Woodland fans wanted to block in the back, but not it. Called, at least. But <laughs> they're not happy at all. Coach Mike Smith beside himself. <laughs> Five twenty-two, Concordia will take over on their own 31-yard line, up 7-6. They got on the board first. And Kaczynski went inside the pulling guard of Harris, and he'll get six yards on it. The ball takes 5.05, clock rolling. But a quick first half. I think we've had, what, two penalties, three penalties? Wayne up 14-0 over Columbia City. Kaczynski up the middle. Great blocking Kaczynski with the nice patient running, letting the hole develop. Great run. 443, first and 10. Ball's at the 49 yard line of Concordia. Four and a half. Taking the time out there. This coach man will go on this play call. First and 10, Maddox, hands Kaczynski, look at the patience, look at the patience, weaves his way, and that is about a seven, eight yard saving tackle right there. He may have taken that out another, well, at least to the chains, and a good tackle, and stop there from number 64 in Austin Snyder. Four yard gain for Concordia, second and six. 3.45, clock rolling here at Etzler Field. SummitCitySports.com, thank you for joining us. Tim Atkinson calling your play-by-play. -play. Here's Maddox, the right with the reception. It'll be a game of about two, maybe three. We'll bring up third and four for Concordia. And a couple of big third down key moments already in this first half. Third and four. Spread formation. Maddox. Oh, my goodness. Another third down defensive offsides. That is going to be a first down for Concordia. Ouch. First and ten. Just no excuse. You know, Matt, uh, Eli Maddox has a uncanny ability, no question about it. We saw Northside jump a couple of times last weekend on a hard count. When they knew it was coming, too. Kaczynski over that left side of the line. Great push. We'll bring up second about seven. Seven. 
the side of the tackle for the Warriors. They go seven on the play by the Tennant offense. It's the ball carrier. It's up seven. Second on a three. Ball at the 33. 220 left in the quarter. Trips near side, right? Excuse me. Eli Maddox, hands Kaczynski. Good defensive play. Right near that first down marker. They may mark him a little shy. That uh, looks like a first down where they're marking. They're marking it right at the 30, which is what the stick is on. Yeah, that's why Coach Tim Manigal's pointing down at the stick. The first down marker stick saying, come on, guys. I'm running the sticks. Yeah. So they'll move the change. Two minutes left. Remember, Concordia will get the ball to start the second half. So here we go, 150, clock rolling. Maddox, good play in the backfield. Number 55 broke through there, did Drayvon Lewis for the tackle and a minimal loss, about a half yard loss for Concordia. They're going hurry up, minute and a half left in the second quarter. Maddox pressured, chucks it out to Kaczynski. Smart play by Kaczynski. He was about to pull that in and punched it out of his own hand. What a heads up play because he would have been tackled inbounds and it would have been a big loss. Watch this, folks. Heads up. This is high IQ, folks. Watch number four come out of the backfield. As Wright does a nice job to get out of the grasp of Lewis and pop it out. Do you see that? That was a heads up play by Kaczynski. Back to the live action, third and nine for Concordia. Maddox blitz up the middle, hit as he throws, up for Trent, turns twice, makes a great adjustment on the ball, and the touchdown for Concordia, Maddox to Noah Trent, 4-6. What a play, 29 yards, pitch and catch <coughs> for Concordia. Hold is down, kick is up, and Chris Hawk will place it in. Two for two, PATs, 14-6, our score will be right back. At SummitCitySports.com. I came into PSM my freshman year after volleyball. Just coming here just really improved like mentally and physically. I brought in my strengths. I came in and I learned how to grow as an athlete. I mean, I've gotten stronger, sprint faster, get up higher. My jump has elevated. Working with Tyler, he built up my endurance for everything, whether it's in weights, sprints. All across the board, we just keep working, and I have athlete development at Warsaw High School that I go to, and so I send him my thing every day, and he changes what we do in here to adapt to what we do there. High school volleyball, when you can go up to five sets, being able to out, like, just outwork everybody and still being able to put in that 100% was huge for me. PSM performance definitely helped me mentally. I know I can beat out people. I know I can like work for what I have, and I know I can like even go to the next level on the court. Looking at college, I can put on it. I'm like I'm training at a college level. I mean, I come in here and I watch college athletes train. You have hockey players, soccer. And you look around and you see everything. Welcome back. Chris Hawk to punt. 14-6. 114 left in the second quarter. This one fielded just inside the 15-yard line. Wants to go out wide to the right on it. Got a nice block. And tackled near the 30-yard line. The return. 105 left in this first half. Woodland will take over on their own 30. Update. Columbia City did get on the board. 14-7, Wayne on top. Also in sectional number 27 is Norwell and Heritage. Norwell was up 7-0. I'll get you an update on that here momentarily. Still 7-0, Norwell on top of Heritage. Up the middle. 
And it looks like they're going to just go into half. Down 14-6, probably hoping to see if they could break one there. You never know. Second eight for Woodland. Near the end of the first quarter. DeKalb up 10-8 over New Haven. And that was in bounds. He's going to be just shy of the first down, third and one. And I think Woodland's going to get a timeout, or is Concordia? It's a question. There's no signal by the white hat. There it is. So it is a timeout called by Woodland, their first of the half. So 22.6 seconds remaining in this second quarter. Concordia up 14-6, and they'll get the ball to start the second half. Woodland looking to throw it, Loudon. Kaczynski turn, went for the interception, couldn't pull it down, will bring up third, excuse me, fourth and one. Now what do you do if you're Woodland? You don't want to give the ball here if you, you know, don't get the first down if you run the ball or whatever you choose to do. If you go for it, <coughs> run or pass, Concordia can take over in the Woodland end, maybe with, what, 14, 12 seconds left. One player, two, real quick. Chris Hawks got a boot. Let's see what happens. Woodland, Snyder in the shotgun. Hard count. And they're trying to get Concordia to jump. They do not. And then, is it a delay a game? Delay a game. So that'll back them up five. And a delay a game as Snyder was snap or clapping for that snap. But a delay a game. Now Meyer will come out to punt it. 15 seconds left. It should put two seconds back on the clock, at least 1.9, because I think it was 17 1. And the delay a game. I know I'd be asking for it. So fourth down and six. Meyer to kick. He's had two outstanding punts already. Fourth and six. Yeah, they do put it back. So 17 seconds on the clock. It's a good job by the officials. Oh, the block came. Couldn't get it. End over end kick. There was nobody back for Concordia. They were going straight all out on the block. So they'll probably come out and kneel this one down. Uh, there'll be 2.7 left in this second quarter. I would imagine Tim Manigal and the Concordia Cadets will just come out and kneel it. But a nice job by the Concordia defense to stay intact. And Eli Maddox just with the one interception. Uh, they did not cost them, at least on the scoreboard side. As they stay 14-6, it looks like going into half. They may air it up one time or just hand it off. I think that's Sawyer in the backfield. It is the freshman, Victor Sawyer, and they will kneel it. So that's halftime, folks. 14-6, our score. I'm going to step away. We'll be right back. SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com.
I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game the game of life. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. I just want to be the best in basketball stuff. So I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball stuff. So. Uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me, so I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's, it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size, being 6'3", six, 6'4", six, to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strip. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts, all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here. has always been here um, you know and they're getting better um, you know I'm watching you know uh, Summit City Sports man they're doing an awesome job and I mean that's a plug them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job and I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting and I'm seeing the talent and it is just truly outstanding and I mean you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne Indiana the talent that's coming up now and the talent that you know is it's is, is, is just here man it's just is really it's really cool in four years, this, this could be you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed. 
from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here! Our football team haven't won a sectional title in 32 years. There's no team better than us if we just do our job. You know, nobody really want to lose no more. All you want is greatness. You want me one, two, three. This is a game that's been on my calendar all year. We don't need fan discipline. We a whole different Northside team. Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. Seventy years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. SummitCitySports.com coming to you live right here from Etzler Field, Woodland High School. As the Woodland Warriors in sectional number 27 playing host to the Concordia Cadets. Woodland came in 4-5 and five overall. Concordia 3-6. and six. Woodland out of the Allen County Conference, ACC. Concordia out of the Summit Athletic Conference, the SAC. Concordia now up 14-6. On a nice run from Landon Kaczynski. To get on the board first from 60 yards. Then, of course, the answer, Jacob Snyder running the ball. Two big runs for Woodland. And then the power run from Drew Fleek, the sophomore, to put it in oh, from 29 yards out or so, maybe 30. Went for two, did not get the two-point conversion. Concordia came back out, throwing the ball, and uh, Noah Trent capped it off with a nice adjustment on the ball for six. Chris Hawk, two for two on PATs. That's where we sit now. 14-6 our score. As we are live, SummitCitySports.com throughout throughout the city and northeast Indiana. Also, of course, this game has a lot to do who they're going to play out at Heritage as Norwell just a 7-0 lead over Heritage towards the end of that second quarter that is a big big score right there Heritage just one away from tying it up against the Norwell Knights one of the best in the business in class 3A so the winner of that will play the winner of this also live on SubcitySports.com, we're at Columbia. We're at Columbia City at Wayne. Wayne was up 14-7 the last time I checked. Yep, that's going to be the halftime score, 14-7. The Wayne Generals on top of the NE8's champion, the Columbia City Eagles. Also live, New Haven at DeKalb. The two NE8 schools as well. DeKalb up 10-8 still over New Haven. They're in Waterloo, Indiana. And then our fifth game, live streaming via SummitCitySports.com. Of course, all the way through, all, the way, all through IHSA TV and the Champions Network. As Leo and Southside, not a surprise to me, folks. Leo just leading 13 to 12 over Southside. Southside just down one against Leo. They're at Leo High School, so Southside looking for a stunner. Have not won all season long. Of course, Tiny Lee re resigned, what, two weeks ago or whatever it was. And Southside, they have some absolute players. Lorenz Tabron, who's their quarterback, is an absolute player. Of course, Irby and Jaden Morris, they got an outstanding trio of players, the south side, and, you know, if they could get a score to go into halftime up over Leo, how does that do momentum-wise for the Archers? What a big-time game that is. As it looks like the Archers moving the ball still about their 32-yard line. You can see all these games. You can link through SummitCitySports.com. You can go to our website, 
Go to hit the live video tab. It'll bring up all of our games we have live, and it will link you. There'll be a link right there to IHSA TV Champions Network while all the games are provided here as the IHSA controls all copyrights of every playoff game. So here we are, Concordia 14-6. Our score, sectional number 27 here at Woodland High School. In the opening round, as this broadcast is brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. Like and follow our Facebook page, Summit City Sports. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Parkview Sports Medicine continues to lead the way in Northeast Indiana. Our specialized sports medicine team offers direct access to physical therapy and sports physicians in our new Parkview Ortho Express Clinic located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse. No referral needed, saving you time and money. Visit parkbsportsmedicine.com to learn more. Online degree programs at the University of St. Francis are built for convenience and flexibility. Most degrees can be completed in 12 months. Visit online.sf.edu. Sioka Cleaning and Restoration, providing top-notch commercial cleaning services, including janitorial water damage and state-of-the-art disinfectant services throughout Northeast Indiana. Are you ready to do what it takes to put your past behind you? Whether it's expunging your criminal record or getting your driver's license reinstated, Jolly Law Firm is your answer. Anderson Heating and Air Conditioning, dedicated to providing the best possible solution for your home or business, a system and solution that fits your unique needs. Visit AndersonCoolHeat.com. Summit Volleyball trains and builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area. From ages 5 to 18, our players are equipped with elite level skills and a foundation of life skills. Jump on board. Together we reach the summit. At Not Muller Contracting, we invest in our customers by providing peace of mind to the entire process from bid to build. Visit NotMullerContracting.com. Tom Seal Tire has been servicing the Fort Wayne area for over 40 years. They'll help you find the perfect tire for your vehicle and other auto repair services like brakes, wheel alignments, engine diagnostics, and more. Kelly Automotive, celebrating their 70th year in business. Shop all 14 of their brands at DriveKelly.com. Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions. Enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment at the Big Eyed Fish. So halftime break here still Woodburn, Indiana. Just outside of Fort Wayne, Indiana here in the 2-6. So we'll be right back. Live from SummitCitySports.com. I came into PSM my freshman year after volleyball. Just coming here just really improved like mentally and physically. I brought in my strengths. I came in and I learned how to grow as an athlete. I mean, I've gotten stronger, sprint faster, get up higher. My jump has elevated. Working with Tyler, he built up my endurance for everything, whether it's in weights, sprints. All across the board, we just keep working. And I have athlete development at Warsaw High School that I go to. And so I send him my thing every day. And he changes what we do in here to adapt to what we do there. High school volleyball, when you can go up to five sets, being able to out, like, just outwork everybody and still being able to put in that 100% was huge for me. PSM performance definitely helped me mentally. I know I can beat out people. I know I can like work for what I have, and I know I can like even go to the next level on the court. Looking at college, I can put on it. I'm like I'm training at a college level. I mean, I come in here and I watch college athletes train. You have hockey players, soccer. You look around and you see every type you can. And just being able to see that level, and I know that I can reach that level as well. You got to work to be the best, and that was just what I wanted to do. I knew that from a young age, I wanted to put in the work. The athletes has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really it's really cool. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, SummitCitySports.com. Thomas Nolan on the camera. Tim Atkinson calling your play-by-play. -play. We're still at halftime, folks. About three minutes 
away from the start of this second half here at beautiful Etzler Field. And we're going to go ahead and step away one more time so I can get some more highlights out to the masses on Twitter and Facebook. We'll be right back at SummitCitySports.com. has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. Back, ladies and gentlemen, SummitCitySports.com. Concordia and Woodland locked in a good one. About a minute and a half left in this halftime break. Going to get three more highlights out. I'm just going to take a one-minute break real quick, folks. We'll be right back at Summit City Sports. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. Seventy years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, as we're going to go ahead and flip on in to the third quarter. Sectional number 27, opening game. The winner of this will take on the winner of Norwell and Heritage, which was a seven-zip lead for the Knights. Cream of the crop in Class 3A, coming off that loss against Columbia City, who find themselves down 14-7. to As here comes Alexander, looks for another onside kick. And number 45 is lined up off sides. His foot's on the line, just unexcusable there from Spielman. So that'll push it five yards. Now you're definitely going onside. So they'll move it up five, and we'll do it here. Let's get the Woodland timeouts back live. The Cal was up 10-8 over New Haven. Well, here we go. Start of our third quarter. McAlexander, she'll pooch it here near side. Washington, a miscommunication smart. Just jump down on the ball, and they now communicate with each other. That's a freshman, Grant Allman, one of the up men. Uh, Washington does fall on it. First and 10 for Concordia to start their first drive of the second half. 
Well played half. By both teams. I mean, a real clean half. Penalty wise, besides the couple of defensive offsides on third downs from Woodland. First play from scrimmage. They're going to tighten up this four wide receiver set. Maddox looking to throw. Looking for the up and out. Uh oh. Bennett nearly got to that. I think he, somebody blew a shoe there. Yeah, that was Snyder. Came right out of his cleat. Yeah, that was a dangerous pass across the middle. Now Maddox will head back over and talk to head coach Tim Manigle over there on the sideline, get the play call. Sectional number 27. Norwell and Heritage going at it. The winners will play next weekend. If Concordia wins, it'll, they'll host no matter what. If Norwell wins and Woodland wins, Norwell will host. Look at the hole behind. I, I mean, it's insane. Craig and Chance Harris just opening up massive holes on this left side of the line. Look at this blocking at the point of contact here on the left side of the line. Boom. Oh, that, that was outstanding. Rusher took the, James Rusher took the inside guy. Bubba Craig pushed the outside guy out. That left Harris to go to the second level. Led to the big gainer. Kaczynski's going to take it again off that left side. Good tackle, but it's going to be about a five-yard gain. And brought down by number nine, Jacob Romer. This is a huge, huge drive defensively for Woodland. You cannot afford to go down. Two touchdowns here to start the third, in my opinion. That one pulled out of the air. That's going to be a first down. Oh, ball came out. Oh, 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 jumped on it, Nick Kaczynski. What, are they going to lose gonna Lose a yard on that fumble? Or it would have been a first down, so they'll be a yard shy, third and one for the Cadets. Ten minutes left in this third quarter. SummitCitySports.com, Tim Atkinson calling your play-by-play -play spread formation. Blitz showing up the middle. They can't get to Kaczynski. Kaczynski's got to bounce it out near side. It's going to be a first down. There is a penalty marker down, though. We got a hold? We got a hold on Concordia. That's a big, big call. First real mistake from the cadets with the flag. So it's going to bring up, I believe, third and 10, if that's where they're going to walk it off at. Oh, it's going to be third and 11 for Concordia after, the, after this foul. So let's see what Coach Manigle chooses to do play call-wise. 14-6, and Cordia, this is the halftime lead. Spread formation, Kaczynski behind of Maddox. Think that inside, uh-oh. That's gonna be a big, big sack, coverage sack. Finished up by number 53, Jake Culler. Huge third down stop for the Woodland Warrior defense. Right, not a lot of where, nowhere to throw the ball. Take a look at it here. Blitz comes shooting, showing off the edge. They back out of it, then it comes up the middle, and they run right in to the tackler. Great job, that was number 48 that started that, that broke that through was Grant Frecker. So Maddox to punt it for Concordia. Nine minutes left in the third. Ooh, good pressure, great punt from Maddox. And it'll take a Woodland bounce, two bounce, three bounce. And it'll be down at about the 32 yard line where Woodland will start on their first drive of the second half. Great stop by the Warrior D. 
856. And if I'm head coach Tim Manigal, if I, when I get the ball back, I am force feeding Kashinsky on the left side of that line. Woodland, their opportunity. Snyder on the read option keeps it. That's going to be a loss of one. Motion man again. Vardaman, he's going to get it this time. Oh, great block on the outside. Uh-oh, he's still out. And finally pushed out of bounds. Great heart run by Ethan Vardaman. And a big pickup for Woodland. Just exactly what they needed. They've been faking that all. They faked that all first half long, uh, and then finally got it to Vardaman, who shows the speed. Great block here outside to break it out. Woodland first and ten. Puts Fleek in motion. He's going to hand it. Fleek has a hole. Good stiff arm and another first down run for the Warriors. That's going to be real close. Yep, that's going to be a first down. Woodland moving the ball. Ball on the 28. Fleet, nowhere to go. Uh oh, made room. Didn't matter. Woo! He is a strong, strong runner, folks, and just a sophomore. First, excuse me, second and one for the Warriors. Up the middle, minimal gain. Did he get to the chain? I think he got to the first down marker. Woodland fans not liking the spot at all because they're marking it short. Well, this is four down anyway. <laughs> Keep it on the ground. If you can't pick up a half yard in two plays, we're talking about something different. And a timeout by Woodland. Yeesh. Hopefully that doesn't come out back and bite them, but we'll step away here. First time out of the second half. It'll be called by Woodland. We'll be right back. SubcitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 26. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and to the house. Drew Fleet, another score for the Warriors to cut it to a two point game. I got stuck in my replay, wouldn't come out of it. As Fleek, once again, so hard to tackle inside the five yard line. 
takes it in for six, 14-12. For two, Woodland. Too many men? Yeah, they broke the huddle with 12 men. So they'll back it up five yards. We'll make this two-point conversion a little more tough. Clock stop, 6.20 left to go in the third quarter. So the Warriors... Puts a man in motion. Want to throw it? Oh, it was there. Oh, what a catch on the football. Woo! What an absolute pull down. And keeping the feet in bounds for the two point conversion as Woodland ties it up big time. What an answer to start this third quarter. Did not realize this is where Loudon was even throwing the ball. Threw it against the grain, back towards the opposite, wide open, and a great play and catch on the ball from DJ Garrick. A 68 yard drive for the Warriors, big time. To tie it up on the two point conversion now. Six twenty. Back out to kick. Looks like McAlexander is going to come from the near hash this time. McAlexander, a little more of a run up, will pooch it far side, and right will kneel it down where Concordia will start on their second drive of the half, and I believe on their own 35, uh, 36 yard line. Leo still up. They're up 13 12 over Southside, the winless team out of the Summit Athletic Conference. Maddox, man to man coverage. Washington caught it and takes it the rest of the way for six. Concordia with the answer on the first play of scrimmage. <laughs> Look at Maddox air this out. What an outstanding arm. Traction athletic performance replay. Wow. Play action. Bid on it a little bit. Man-to-man -man coverage with Washington. They've run into safety over there several times. But an outstanding catch thrown right into the breadbasket of Washington for six. Hawk in for the PAT. So they tie it up for the first time, does Woodland. But Concordia answers on the very next play. 21-14. Concordia on top. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 21-14, Concordia back on top. Chris Hawk to kick. Yeah. 
High kick, end over end, fielded inside the five-yard line. One to bounce it wide, nowhere to go. Great kick coverage by the Cadets. Woodland was impressive on their first drive in this third quarter. They will take over on their own 16-yard line, first and 10. Story of the night right now, though, is the Southside Archers sticking with Leo just down one in the second quarter, or towards the end of the second quarter. It's got to be darn near close to end. So 6 4 Woodland. Two in the backfield, three wide receivers set. That is Snyder in at quarterback. Hands out wide to Romer. Romer cut it back in, a gain of about three. Second seven. Eight and a half. Five thirty-three left in this third quarter. Loudon, Bartman in motion. Want to hand it near side? That was Loudon to Snyder, and not this time. A pair of defenders. And Hayworth. And number thirty-three, Jacob Levitt. Third and seven for the Warriors. Uh oh, Loudon. That's going to be five yard penalty, though. False start. So back them up five instead of third and eight. It'll be third and 13. I can even do that math. So big difference in what you're looking at playbook wise. Third and long. Third and 13. Two safeties back here for Concordia. Trips near side for Woodland. They're going to put a man in motion. That's Snyder. That's Ed Loudon's going to come near side. Looking to throw it. Lobs it up and just over the head of Hardeman. There was a lot of traffic. Three defenders over there kind of triangled in of Woodland. And uh, that will be fourth and 13. Fourth and 13, Kaczynski back deep. And over end kick, takes another Woodland bounce. Meyer does a great job at that. That'll be down at about the 48-yard line. First and 10 for Concordia to start their second drive, or excuse me, their third drive. Of this third quarter, 4-12 left in it. DeKalb, as they start the third quarter, they're still up 10-0 over New Haven. First and 10 for Concordia. Hand Kaczynski. Found a little crease, and then it's tackled from behind. That's number 64, Austin Snyder. Maddox rolls out right, throws it to Trent. Trent did a nice job to come back for the ball. Four progressions, going to put him about two yards shy of the first down marker. We'll bring up third and two 
324 left in the third quarter. Good strong arm by Maddox to flip it out there to Trent. Another big third down play for Woodland. And if the coaches aren't screaming, do not jump, I don't know what they'd say. They've already had two third down penalties on offsides that given Concordia first downs. Here's Maddox. There it was, nearly a jump. Maddox, Kaczynski, first down. Tackle from behind. Ball came out. I think he's calling him down. Nope. Ball is out, and that is going to be a fumble and a recovery for Woodland. Maybe that's the momentum and the break they needed here, folks. After Concordia moving the ball nicely, the handoff, Kaczynski's hit from behind. That ball had to have been out before he hit the ground then. No complaints from the Concordia sideline and the recovery. Woo! Just like that, it's football. <laughs> oh. Woodwood takes over. First and 10 from the 37 yard line. Snyder in the quarterback. Vardaman on the jet sweep. Uh oh. Nope. James Rusher, folks. He lives in the backfield, outstanding football player. And a big tackle in loss. What's that, a five-yard loss? Sheesh, 2.30 left. In this third quarter. going to do here nope keeps it does fleek fleek near the original line of scrimmage will be plus one on that we'll bring up third and nine I believe and we have an injured player down for Woodland and we're going to go ahead and take a short break here, folks. We'll be right back. SummitCitySports.com. I came into PSM my freshman year after volleyball. Just coming here just really improved like mentally and physically. I brought in my strengths. I came in and I learned how to grow as an athlete. I mean, I've gotten stronger, sprint faster, get up higher. My jump has elevated. Working with Tyler, he built up my endurance for everything, whether it's in weights, sprints. All across the board, we just keep working. And I have athlete development at Warsaw High School that I go to. And so I send him my thing every day. And he changes what we do in here to adapt to what we do there. High school volleyball, when you can go up to five sets, being able to out, like, just outwork everybody and still being able to put in that 100% was huge for me. PSM performance definitely helped me mentally. I know I can beat out people. I know I can like work for what I have. And I know I can like even go to the next level on the court. Looking at college, I can put on it. I'm like, I'm training at a college level. I mean, I come in here and I watch college athletes train. You have hockey players, soccer, but you look around and you see every type you can. And just being able to see that level, and I know that I can reach that level as well. You gotta work to be the best, and that was just what I wanted to do. I knew that from a young age, I wanted to put in the work. The athletes has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne. Indiana. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Third and nine. Loudon. Takes a snap, just got it off, has to waggle out. This is a run, there's no one out there to throw to. Oh my goodness, an absolute demolishment of a third down play by this Concordia D. Nowhere to go for Loudon. As there was no wide receivers out there, that had to have been a run. I mean, no wide receivers at all from hash mark to the sideline on that far side. Take a look at it here. Loudon, the play action. No, just a straight. I think he. I think that was a mess up. 
I think that was a broken play. You know, I don't know whose fault it was, but that was definitely a broken play. There was no way that was the design. And maybe that's a byproduct of flipping around quarterbacks. There's been at least three players that have taken snaps. 41 seconds left in the third quarter and another delay a game on Woodland. Forty seconds, clock will roll. Kashinsky back deep for Concordia. Low kick. But he's mastered the roll. Inside the 50 yard line. 20 seconds left in this third quarter. Concordia will come out and take over. How about Columbia City? About five and a half minutes left in the third quarter. They take their lead up for the first time, 21-20 over Wayne. And they're getting the ball back here on a punt from Wayne. Norwell was up 14-0 over Heritage. Here's Maddox, four wide receiver set, pressured. Just held it too long and then smartly will throw it away. Got a flag though, throw it on this near side. That was thrown right before he threw the ball. Might be a hold. That will be a holding call. Uh, that, that penalty at the 39, so that's going to be a 10-yard penalty from there. Coach Mike Smith wanted a intentional grounding as well, which would have been a loss of down to go with it, but this is first down and forever for Concordia. Four wide receivers set. Maddox to throw. Oh, that's dangerous. Threw it right into the safety. Just threw it right into the safety. Not sure what he was thinking there. What a huge mistake where the momentum was starting to roll again with Concordia. I mean, besides the penalty, obviously, but the way they were moving the ball, uh, Maddox just stares down the center of the field. I don't know if he expected a different route. Oh, he's wanting Washington to go after it, but thrown way too far ahead of him. And an interception. And a huge play for Woodland. And Carter Fleek. So ball on the Concordia 43-yard line. First and 10. Six seconds left. Loudon looking to throw on the out. Snyder nearly pulls in the one-hand catch, but cannot. Clock stop, two seconds left. In this third quarter. Two seconds. We got 10 on the play clock. They have not even got the play out of the huddle. This is unacceptable. You're going to have to burn maybe another timeout. You already burned one. And that just throws off everything. Rusher broke right in. And why aren't the refs blowing this one dead? So that's the end of the third quarter, 21-14. Concordia does lead. Will step away and get set for fourth quarter action here. Sectional number 27 from Woodland right here live at Summit City Sports. Dot com.
various sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com. Welcome back. Fourth quarter is upon us. 12 minutes to decide who will move on sectional play or who will go home and finish the season. Oh, oh my goodness, off the hands, off the helmet of Snyder and pulled down and taken the rest of the way for the touchdown by DJ Garrett. Oh my goodness gracious, what did I just see? Whoa. What did I just see? It looked like he was throwing it to the middle guy. Let's go to our traction AP replay. Loudon. Off the hands of Snyder, then off the helmet, and then taken in the rest of the way by Gehrig. Oh, wow. Wow. You just never know what you're going to see each and every Friday night. Tremendous concentration by the senior, DJ Gehrig. Now to take the lead, going for two. Snyder, the pitch. Oh, the throwback to the near side to Snyder and takes it in for two. Woodland Warriors take the one-point lead on a little razzle-dazzle. Woo! I like it. I like that a lot from Coach Mike Smith and staff. Traction Athletic Performance Replay. You could see it was going to be a double pass. I did not see it was coming back to Snyder. Fleet threw it back. Snyder takes it and not even touched till he crosses the goal line. Woodland up 22-21. All started with that errant pass down the center of the field that led to this score. The 22 21 Woodland is on top and they'll kick it. Thanks for joining us tonight all the way throughout Northeast Indiana. Five live games from SummerCitySports.com. Tim Atkinson here calling your play-by-play. -play. You can follow me on Twitter at TimAtkinson22. Of course, follow SummerCitySports.com on Twitter at 260Sports. The squib and Trent will fall on it. It'll be down at the 30, 31, excuse me, 35, 36 yard line. First and 10. Let's see if Maddox can answer. Screen. Using the aggression against him. Kaczynski. Uh oh, he's got blockers and speed. Ooh, that's a touchdown saving tackle right there. Good set up by Concordia, and I like that. Relieve the pressure a little bit from Maddox. Just flip out of screen, get some big yardage. Ball at the 44-yard line. Four wide receiver set for the Cadets. Hand Kaczynski over that left side. Good bounce. Threw an arm tackle and tripped up near the 35-yard line. They're going to tackle at the 36, second and two. Same formation. Eli Maddox in the pistol. Kaczynski behind him. 
The hand. Kaczynski. Good block in that side over that right guard. And center. That was Rusher and company. Uh, sophomore Jason Wagman. So first and ten for Concordia. Ten forty-five left to go in this fourth quarter. Spread formation again. Kashinsky behind Maddox. Turns, hands, Maddox. Look at that push. My goodness gracious. <laughs> Another first down run on the left side of that line. This is just not fair over there. Wow. First and 10. From the 16 yard line. And that's going to be a tackle and a loss of two. Big time play on the right end of that line. Answering the bell that time. Gain to about seven, maybe six. Uh oh. And that's going to be a 15 yarder. As Maddox Wright was pushed way after the whistle, and it was a hard push. He went falling. He's a big fella. And that is a tough, tough play right there. It's going to be an automatic first. It's going to be a first down on the 15-yard penalty. And I think they'll what? They're going to go half the distance, I would assume. So they will spot it at the six-yard line. First and goal for Concordia. Got to keep your cool here, sectional play. 9.33 left. Oh, broken play. And Maddox is swallowed up. By Craig. That was just a missed block or what, but Trevon Lewis just broke right through there. Traction AP replay. Comes right from the center of the line. Yeah, just unblocked. He's over the left guard, the right guard. And just unblocked. A big answer after the personal foul. 8-38, second 11. Excuse me, second goal from the 11. Maddox, across the middle, threw another interception right down the center of the field. Oh, man. Eli Maddox with his third pick. That one right into the hands of Ethan Barterman. And Woodland will take over first and 10 from their own 20. Just not sure what Maddox is thinking there, forcing it in the center of the field. And, I mean, there's tons of gray jerseys around this. And, yeah, I mean, two wide receivers bringing four defenders there. And part of it makes a nice play on the, uh, nice play on the ball. Now first and ten for the Warriors. Going to go to Fleek. Fleek out wide. And good job to bring him down, minimal gain. That was number 33, the sophomore, Jacob Levitt. Two-yard off by the 8.05 left.
Clock rolling, 7.50. Two on the play clock. Just get it off. Play action. They swing it out wide to Snyder. Snyder cannot get past a pair of Concordia defenders. That's going to be a loss on the play. A loss of two will bring up third and ten. Third and long. Out near the 25, maybe 26, is smashed out of bounds by Okwo, And fourth down, and Meyer in to punt it. He's had three, two beautiful, beautiful punts inside the 20. And another third one with a tremendous roll. The clock stops, 7.02. Kaczynski and lets it. I mean, you, you know what Meyer's doing. That's going to roll inside the 10-yard line. You've seen it all first half. I don't know how you're not talking about that. Kaczynski's got to come up and field that ball. That rolled for 40 yards, 35 yards. Concordia will take over, first and 10. Inside their own 10-yard line. Concordia down by one. Maddox struggling a little bit. See if he can bounce back. Three picks now tonight. And two of them really just never should have even been thrown. Throwing it down the center of the field. So here's four wide receiver set. Maddox, they're going to go right to the pass. And Washington stopped his route. I'm not sure what's happening here, but Wright threw it on a fly route, and Washington stopped at about the 15, 20-yard line, about the 15-yard line, and tried to put the Jets on to get it, but had man-to-man -man coverage, too, on that deep, too deep, as he was by the cornerback. Spread formation, 640. And Kaczynski bounces it. Uh-oh, good block. Tremendous block by Maddox Wright. Uh-oh, Kaczynski. Oh, -ho 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 -ho. shoestring tackle by number 15, Carter Fleek. Or that was going to the house from 87. Let me first down in Woodland Territory. Six thirty, clock rolling. That's actually at the forty-nine of Concordia. Must have stepped out of bounds on that far side. The hand of Kashinsky. I am don't know why you don't just do this the whole game. Landon Kashinsky, fifty-one yards to the house once again, breaking it off. Record-breaking night for him. Five-point lead now for the Cadets. That blocking by Craig and Harris on the left side, plus Rusher in the middle. And Kaczynski breaks another one. From 51 yards out, let's look at it together. Patient right here, patient, sees it, and boom. Do you think they have the angle? Uh, he is quick. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Let's see if they go for two, they do. To make it a seven-point game. Concordia up 27-22. The flip out. Great play call. And the stick, though. Once again, a DB coming off his wide receiver on the swing out. And the stick to keep it a five-point game. Let's look again at Mr. Kaczynski taking another one to the house from his own end of the field. 51 yard. 
behind Craig and Harris. Look at that hole. And then the Jets to turn it on and take it in for six. A couple of weeks ago, Kashinsky had, a, what, 250 yards or so rushing. I don't know what he's got tonight, but it's got to be darn near that, if not over, for the Concordia Cadet. Six twelve. Left 27-22. Three timeouts for Concordia. Two for Woodland. But what an answer from Concordia and Eli Maddox. Couple of mistakes. Did a nice job on a couple of passes in that drive. So Hawk will kick it. Inside the 10 yard line, it's fielded. Jace Kitts. Oh, we got a flag. I think this is coming back a little bit. Two flags over on that far side. Usually a hold or a block in the back. Throw them back there. 6.03 left in this fourth quarter. SummitCitySports.com. It is a block in the back. So a spot foul, 10 yard from the spot, will bring up first and 10 from the 20 yard line of Woodland. Empty backfield. Fleek and a quarterback puts Snyder in motion. Then Fleek whips it out here near side. And what a tackle on the end. Tim Okwo. That's going to be a loss of about three, maybe four. Clock rolling, 545. In this fourth quarter. Three wide receiver set. They're two of them bunched. Now they're going to put a man in motion. Just got it off before it hit zero on the play clock. Tim okay, whoa. <laughs> no going. Here for Woodland. How about the D from the Cadets? Five minutes left in this fourth quarter. And a timeout called by head coach Tim Manigal. Yeah. I'm sorry that was taken by Woodland and head coach Mike Smith. They have one timeout remaining. We're going to take a short one here at SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Third and 12 for Woodland. Loudon, the throw. Oh, what a play. Tim Okawo, give him all three of these plays defensively. Kid, absolute two tackles for a loss, and then a pass breakup on the edge. What a defensive play individually by Tim Okawo. That is next level, fourth down now. And the way this line is blocking for Concordia. Now Kaczynski's going to come up. They're going to go for the block on this punt. 
Or actually, it's a... F yeah, they're going to go for the block, I believe, or actually just playing a pre prevent defense. There's no way they're going for it here, or they're yeah, faking it. You got fourth and 14 or so as Meyer will bounce it near the 30 and inside the 30-yard line. And it'll be down at the 27 where Concordia will take over first and 10. So the Woodland defense got to come up big here. And if I'm Woodland on this first play, I just overload that right side of my D and make them come to this opposite side. 434. Yeah, that's going to be a flag. I think it's going to be holding as number 70, Jackson Fleek, who forced a fumble earlier, was absolutely tackled to the ground. And a good call by the White Hat. So Leo does get on the board there in the third, uh, start of the third. They're up 20 to 12 now over Southside. New Haven finally on top of DeKalb. They're up 14 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Fifteen on the play clock, plenty of time. Maddox hands Kashinsky to get the clock rolling. Minimal gain. Tackle right there at the twenty. It's gonna be about a gain of one. Clock rolling, 350. Expect Concordia to take all of this play clock. Kuczynski on that left side. We'll ran into a wall that time. Good stick up there. Stepped up and absolutely played some wood. I believe that was number nine. Jacob Romer said his name several times. So Norwell starting to pull away from Heritage. They're now up 21-0 in the third quarter. Two forty-eight, big third down, third and thirteen. Woodland just down five, one timeout remaining. Two thirty-eight, the hand of Kashinsky. Oh, bounces it, and then cuts it back in. Tackled at the thirty, thirty-one, and finally at the thirty-two. Will bring up fourth down. So the Woodland D did what they're supposed to do, force a punting situation here for Eli Maddox and Concordia. 220. Clock rolling now at 215. So they'll take it down and they're going to burn a timeout here with one second on the play clock. So Concordia will take a timeout. They still have two remaining for Woodlands one. We're going to step away real quick. SummitCitySports.com. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. 
Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continued. Maddox to punt it. Off the side of the foot a little bit. Oh, takes a woodland bounce, backs back, 20, 10 yards. Wow. So plenty of time for Woodland. Good field position. 143 left in this fourth quarter. First and 10 from the 41 yard line of the Cadets. Update from Wayne High School. Columbia City up 35 28 over the Generals. With about four minutes left to go in that game. 143 left. Loudon rolls out right on the comeback. Ooh, fitted in there nicely to DJ Garrick. First and 10, and flipped out of bounds. Clock stopped. Cowbell in full effect out here. That's the field. The hand off to Fleek. Fleek runs into a Concordia cadet. That's going to be a gain of two. Ooh. The Warriors taking a timeout. They're last with 128 left. Different way to go about it for sure. And yeah, we're going to step away real quick. Some City Sports. has always been here um you know and they're getting better um you know i'm watching you know uh summer city sports man they're doing an awesome job and i mean that's a plug them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job and i'm able to be in nashville and watch games uh on youtube um that they're broadcasting and i'm seeing the talent and it is just truly outstanding and i mean you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the nfl now from four second eight for Woodland, 129 left 27 22 concordia on top loser goes home another broken play Loudon, can he get out of there? The sack, the big sack by the sophomore, Jacob LeVitt. What a huge play, another broken play. That's on a third, on a second and eight, coming out of a timeout. Wow. Clock rolling, under a minute, just under a minute. Ooh, Washington in that length got a piece of it. If he didn't, I think Fleet, excuse me, Garrick was going to pull that down behind both defenders. Ooh. So here's the game, folks. Fourth and 14. 48 seconds left. Forty-eight seconds left. Six on the play clock. Loud in. The double move. No one's there. And nearly picked off by Cook, and that will do it. The receivers never got released on the line of scrimmage. And turnover on downs. And that is going to do it. Concordia is going to survive and move on. Wow. What a roller coaster of a fourth quarter here, folks. Let's look at that last play from scrimmage. 
And there's no release, no wide receivers out there. Now Concordia can just kneel on it. Well, they'll kneel on it. No timeouts for Woodland. The last play of scrimmage there. And that will do it. Congratulations to the Concordia Cadets. They hold on and win 27-22 over Woodland to move on to the sectional semifinal and sectional number 27. Parkview Sports Medicine Player of the Game. Landon Kuschinski. What an outstanding performance by him and the offensive line by the Concordia Cadets, but just can't get enough. As you got a feel, of course, for the seniors of Woodland as they end it. And what an outstanding job by head coach Tim Manicle. He's going to walk over Jacob Snyder 40 yards away. As Snyder just so upset as head coach Tim Manigal went to console him. What great sportsmanship. But Concordia with the win and the sectional semifinal berth where it looks like they will host Norwell next Friday evening from Zollner Stadium. Wow. What an absolute night of high school football. What an absolute beauty of a night. And outstanding weather. Match with the football, 27-22. Concordia wins it to move on. For Thomas Nolan, I am Tim Atkinson. You've been watching Indiana High School Football right here. SummitCitySports.com. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. I like to stay active. I try to come in here at least three times a week and just get my one hour workout in. Since September, I think I've put on 22 pounds of muscle. I think my vertical has gone up plus five inches. I've gotten a lot faster since then too. I can hit the ball further. In football, I can push people around more. It's basketball easier too. Just being stronger just makes everything easier. Brandon started with Jim Rat's basketball training. After one of the sessions, he came up to me and he wanted to know if he could do more. So Brandon started the EDGE program in November in addition to the club training he was doing because it offers personalized programming for his athletic goals. PSM Performance uses a long-term athletic development pyramid. At such a young age, it's really good for Brandon to set the foundation of athletic development. Since he is in season all year round, he has to be ready for all the physical demands. So he does a lot more strength training just because in basketball he sprints and cuts a lot. In baseball he's doing a lot of sprinting. In football he does a lot of sprinting and jumping. So preparing him to withstand the physical demands of those games, he does a lot more strength training. I like all the lower body stuff the best. I do goblet squats, split squats, back squat, front squat, a lot of those. Tyler knows what's best for me. He always points me in the right direction. He just pushes me to go harder every day. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, 
we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. I just want to be the best in basketball. So I want to be the greatest of all time to play women's basketball. So uh, I just know there's people out there working just as much as me. So I just want to keep working hard and keep that intensity going. And so one day I can pursue my dreams of being in the WNBA and playing overseas. So I just want bigger things to come in my life. I remember when I started in March, she could do zero pull-ups. She did have a great 25-inch vertical when she first started. Uh, she only weighed 150 pounds. Uh, one of our main mottos is do the simple things exceedingly well, and that's where we started. So we started the foundation, um, building her base, and now we've got to basically the peak of our pyramid of things that we can do with her. So uh, we didn't skip any levels. We did all the basics, and she got really, really good at them, and that's what's led her to become as great as she is at, at basketball and performance. I've watched her grow. Uh, the confidence-wise, the strength-wise, the jumping ability, her footwork, it's it's really amazing to kind of watch for a girl her size being six three six four to move like she can move and do the thing and be as agile as she is along with the strip. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed from business, nursing and science to the arts, all with a 99% career success rate. You belong here. 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 I belong here. has always been here, um, you know, and they're getting better. Um, you know, I'm watching, you know, uh, Summit City Sports, man, they're doing an awesome job. And, I mean, that's a plug. Them dudes are, are doing an outstanding job. And I'm able to be in Nashville and watch games uh, on YouTube um, that they're broadcasting, and I'm seeing the talent. And it is just truly outstanding. And, I mean, you guys have seen uh, the talent that's in the NFL now from Fort Wayne, Indiana, the talent that's coming up now and the talent that, you know, is, 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 is just here, man. It's just it's really, it's really cool. In four years, this, this could, could be, be you. you. At the University of St. Francis, you'll find everything you need to succeed, from business, nursing and science, to the arts. You belong here! Our football team haven't won a sectional title in 32 years. There's no team better than us, and we just do our job. You know, nobody really want to lose no more. All you want is greatness. You want me one, two, three. This is the game that's been on my calendar all year. We don't need fan discipline. We a whole different Northside team. Area sports looked a lot different back in 1952 when Jim Kelly opened his first dealership in Fort Wayne. 70 years later, that original dealership has grown into the Kelly Automotive Group with 14 brands in three locations, including our new Fort Wayne Auto Mall and Kelly Chevrolet on Lima Road. Fort Wayne continues to support our local teams and businesses. Thank you for 70 years. We could have never done it without you. Visit us today at drivekelly.com.